Hi, Dr. Thomas. Uh, thank you for joining us this afternoon. I uh, appreciate you taking the time to record with Re Rotorex. I'm uh, just going to ask you a couple questions and I look forward to your answers. So in your practice, I'm just going to start easily. What is your signal to use Rotorex? Or is there something that you're seeing in the angiogram? How do you know it's the right case? So uh, at least in, in, in my practice, uh, the way I view Rotorex is it's an absolutely fantastic thrombectomy device. Uh, works well as an arthrectomy device. It's, you know, it's on label for both, uh, but works well with regards to soft plaque predominantly in my opinion, and works great as a thrombectomy device. So when I have a patient, you know, one of the things that I look for is, is the history of the patient. So. If a patient comes in with acute worsening of symptoms, you know that there's likely a thrombotic component to this occlusion. So that itself, you keep that in the back of your mind when you're dealing in, with an occlusion. Now, certainly there's some telltale signs of a thrombotic occlusion when you see one angiographically. And then also, you know, the way a wire passes through a lesion tells you, you know, to some extent, um, you know, to be careful that this is possibly a thrombotic occlusion. Remember, it's a thrombotic occlusion that can, you know, get you into trouble with regards to disc embolization. So, you really want to take care of that uh, thrombotic component of an occlusion uh, when you're dealing with uh, when you're dealing with it. So, you know, when I when I have that sort of history in mind, when I see, uh, you know, some telltale signs of, of thrombus or thrombotic occlusion, uh, when I do an angiogram, the way your wire behaves you know, gives me an idea of when to pull the Rotorex device out. Uh, I almost always use uh, IVUS as well, so that gives me a great idea as to, um, you know, what I'm dealing with with regards to, you know, morphology of the occlusion, morphology of the plaque. And so do I use Rotorex in every case? No, uh, there's no one device that fits all. Um, and so you got, so the way I do it is I pick and choose based on uh, what we talked about uh, you know, as to when I use the Rotorex. Love the Rotorex for instant occlusions. Um, you know, there's always a, uh, you know, some amount of a thrombotic component with uh, with occlusions. So frequently with instant occlusions, you'll have, you know, areas of stenosis that, you know, eventually cause the stent to go down. But within, you know, the intervening spaces, you have a significant amount of, you know, aqueous plaque, thrombus, and so on that can easily distal embolize. And so, uh, Rotorex is great for cleaning out uh, instant occlusions. For instant occlusions, I love using the eight French system. It's a very, very powerful device. And so really cleans the stents out well. Certainly, you know, you have to look at the size of the stent, but certainly for most proximal SFA, prox pop occlusion, instant occlusions, uh, the eight French system works beautifully. You mentioned distal embolization you have to be worried about. So when you're using Rotorex, do you ever use a filter wire with it? Or can you talk me through your kind of technique when you're operating in your practice? Sure. Um, I've never used a filter, uh, uh, anabolic protection system with the Rotorex. Um, I think um, if you use the device correctly, um, distal embolization is minimal to, uh, you almost don't see it to very minimal. Uh, the way I like to use the Rotorex, you know, if I'm worried about causing it as I'll, you know, one is go slow. So you want to make sure you go slow. You, you know, you clean out whatever you're cleaning out, either the native or the instant occlusion. Um, my preference is to try and keep the distal cap intact until I've created, uh, you know, I've uh, done a few runs. And then at the last instant, you know, when my final, you know, once I'm satisfied with the bug, I'll try and create, you know, and what do you call it, clear the distal cap. Um, I've seen physicians do it other ways as well, you know, in which, you know, you'll do it just a very, very slow pass throughout. Uh, but um, you can use whatever technique you want to. I've used both ways, but almost I've never used a filter with uh, the Rotorex. I don't think personally, I don't think you need to use it. And also it tends to create, you know, it tends to be a little, uh, you know, you got it tends to make it a little more complicated in my opinion if you're going to use uh, this lumbolic protection so you mentioned using rotorex and isr uh can you talk a little bit more about that how has that changed your practice when we received that indication and what were you using previously sure um 
before uh, before Rotorex um, used a bunch of uh, tools to clean out, you know, occluded stents. Um, you know, things that you, that are on label for uh, ISR. Uh, you know, laser orthotomy works great. Uh, I I know the um, the jet stream also was approved for instant. I used it a couple of times a long time ago. Um, but one of the things that you're always worried about instant occlusions is the thrombotic component of it. So not infrequently in the past, you know, I've used distal embolic protection, used, uh, you know, some sort of a thrombectomy device before that to clean out this, you know, the thrombus component, and then use an orthrectomy device on top of that to clean out the stents. Because at the end of the day, you do need to debulk, you know, whatever material is within the stents if you want to have a good results. But the good thing with uh, with the Rotorex uh, is it tends to clean out the stents uh, very, very well on its own. So it's almost like a solo device that I've used now for instant occlusions. Uh, personally, I think it works very, it works much better for occlusions, instant occlusions rather than restenosis. Uh, because for the most part, when you talk about restenosis, these are, you know, it's a fibrotic plaque that causes the stenosis. There's not much loose aqueous thrombus within it. So, uh, I think your results with Rotorex are a heck of a lot better if you use it for instant occlusions. Thank you. Um, so I want to go back to something you mentioned earlier that not a device is one size fits all. I absolutely agree with you with that. And I think one important thing to Rotorex is knowing when not to use it. So you can can you talk about lesions that you would not use Rotorex in? Sure. Um, like I mentioned before, Rotorex is a very powerful uh, powerful system. Um, when I definitely don't like to use it for calcified lesions. Um, it just is it, the mechanical action doesn't work for calcified lesions, especially if you've got an eccentric shelf of calcium uh, and your wire is, you know, moves away from that. You know, the Rotorex is not really going to do anything for that dense calcified block of calcium, but because it's so far, you know, pushed out towards the wall, the contralateral wall, you could get into trouble with perforations and so on. Um, you know, don't use it in very small vessels. Obviously, you've got to pay attention to the vessel size. Uh, so for the most part, you know, those are the types of cases where you really want to probably stay away from using uh, Rotorex. Perfect, thank you. Um, just got one more question for you. So what advice would you give to a new user who's adopting Rotorex? Okay. Um, number one, uh, use it for the right, uh, right morphology to start with. In my opinion, works beautiful for thrombus, soft aqueous block. Um, once you've crossed, you know, you should have an idea as to, you know, what what is within that occlusion. Use IVIS, it'll tell you what sort of plaque morphology you have. So you don't really have to use it always for acute cases. Subacute cases, patients who, you know, uh, subacute occlusions within a few weeks old, Rotorex works great. Uh, when you're using it, uh, you know, start, you know, go slow, you know, let the device do the work for you. Uh, don't just try and plow through a through an occlusion, let the device work. Uh, you know, you get a lot of auditory signals that you can get back when your device is getting stuck. You know, um, you know, pull back, you know, let the device clear out with some amount of blood and fluid and then, you know, keep going. Uh, overall, you know, I think it works great when you use it in the in the right lesion morphology. Perfect, thank you. And you brought up one thing that I actually want to ask now. Can you talk a little bit more about the auditory signals that you mentioned? Sure. Um, you know, when you're getting stuck within a within within something that's you know lesion, either it's calcified or or fibrotic, you hear auditory deceleration. So you know your device, you know the rotating head is getting stalled in that. You know, pull back. Um, you know, you'll hear, you know, the, the thing system gets, you know, revs back up again um, and then approach the lesion again, again, gently. If you feel like you're getting stuck within that thing, you know, maybe what you can do is, you know, just push through that tight stenotic lesion, um, you know, without the, without the rotor X on. And then once you get to a place where it's, you know, more of a soft occlusion and so on, turn, turn it back on and keep going. And so, you know, those are the ways you'll 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 see that you know just to prevent uh, the device getting stalled and so on. And if it gets stalled, the you know it kind of it decouples on its own. So 
uh, it's uh, you know it, I've, I've never had the Rotorex get stuck into a system. So, but you know, if you pay attention to things like the auditory signals, um, you know, you know that it's getting stalled, it's getting stuck, pull back, and let the device rev up again. 